even in Atlanta's nicer neighborhoods, trouble is not unique. But in Buckhead, a crime like this is extremely rare. I can say probably 10 times maybe in my career that I've worked a true kidnap. Nationally, only 4% of missing person cases are classified as involuntary, meaning a kidnapping or an abduction. Now, Monica Bowie is considered to be one of those. Hours after Monica disappears, police are still canvassing the area when they observe a suspicious man walking around her apartment complex. After watching him get in his car, police pull him over. They find out his name is Lonnie Bennett. Bennett happens to be a friend of Monica's fiance, Rico Walters. On the passenger seat of Bennett's car, police discover a paper bag full of cash. Authorities won't reveal how much. After they bring Bennett in for questioning, they soon determine he's got a criminal history in Georgia, one that includes narcotics and theft charges. The fact that he was in that area with that money and Miss Bowie was missing. I think it's curious. I think it's very curious. The next day, back in Monica's hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, her mother, Linda, gets a call from DeKalb County Police. And he said, I have to tell you that she is missing. Then it was like I was in a tunnel. Linda, her sister Joan, and their two daughters immediately hop in the car and drive almost 700 miles from Pittsburgh to Atlanta to meet with police. The family is more determined than frantic. I wanted Monica. You know, there's really nothing that they could say to me. It's like produce her. When they arrive in Atlanta, Linda seeks and gets help from a familiar face, Monica's former fiance, Mark Canty. With Monica's apartment being searched by police, Linda and her family recruit Mark to help them scour the city. We went out on a search for Monica. We walked, we put flyers out. I don't even know where we were, but we didn't care, we went anyway. Local reporters are now hot on the story and begin to believe that the people Monica associates with, including her fiance, Rico Walters, may have put her in danger. Looking back at this case, there were some shady characters in Monica's life. Monica has a big heart, but sometimes she could put a good spin on a bad situation. She always wanted to find some good in everything. She gave people her friendship that didn't deserve it. Because of his arrest several weeks earlier, Monica's fiance is in jail at the time she is abducted. Monica's mother wonders if Rico has information that he's not sharing. She goes to speak with him herself. And he looked me in my face and said, I didn't do anything and I really don't know anything. And I said, but I don't believe you. He couldn't have taken Monica himself. Whether he did something to put her in danger is still a question. A major break in the case occurs the day after Monica vanishes. On the west side of town, near the Hunter Hills Baptist Church, police find a burned out car. It had been reported stolen that very day. It's a Burgundy 2002 Mercury Sable. The license plate and description match that of the car that witnesses saw speeding from Monica's building on the night of July 5th. An individual was picked up in connection to the car and was held in DeKalb County. His name is Jasper Keels. According to police, Jasper Keels took the car from an acquaintance on July 4th, the day before Monica disappears. Now it turns up after being torched and abandoned on the opposite side of town. He borrowed a car from this guy and never returned it. So it was reported stolen. And that's where the connection to Monica's abduction seems to end. Even though police are unable to link Keels to Monica's disappearance, they do arrest him for car theft and marijuana possession. Then, police take a deeper look into Monica's relationships. They question another familiar face, Monica's first fiance. Mark Canty. He's also had problems with the law. 
Mark never hid that he had a sketchy past. I said, you know, everyone is a suspicion to me. While Mark Canty was engaged to Monica, he and two associates were charged in a 2006 multi-million dollar real estate scheme. I honestly feel that Monica was put in danger when she first met Mark, but that was his lady. So he was gonna do anything possible to protect her. Months go by and police have no new leads. So I get out and find her. You know, that wasn't happening fast enough for me. Frustrated and depressed, Linda Howard, along with her sister and their daughters, return home to Pittsburgh. Desperate for hope, they seek insights from an unconventional Pittsburgh crime-fighting duo, psychic sisters Suzanne and Jean Vincent. They did tell me a few things on the psyche ground that they probably should not have known. I, it kind of sparked my interest. The Vincent sisters have assisted authorities in solving high-profile crimes for decades. They say they were involved with both the Chandra Levy and Kaylee Anthony cases. They say they sense what may have happened to Monica. I felt the fear when I went to the Berkshire Apartments. When I was outside the gates, I could see the perpetrators go through the gates. I definitely felt that she knew the person, that they knew of her, or there was some kind of a connection. She recognized her abductors, and she knew exactly what this meant. I'm probably not gonna come home tonight. At the spot where the car is found, the Vincent sisters sense a violent struggle. I feel it was almost that she knew something or they wanted something and she just couldn't give it to them. She was fighting for her life. She was talking for her life. She was convincing them, let me go. Even with the psychic sister's advice, Linda is no closer to finding Monica now than the day she got the call that her daughter had gone missing. And police lacked that one crucial piece of information that could tie it all together. Next, with Monica's fiance in custody, authorities look to others. One with a bag of money, an ex-boyfriend, and an alleged car thief. We do suspect foul play. Illegal narcotics is, is gonna be the cause. Meanwhile, the family's concern for Monica overwhelms them. Fear of not knowing, that's almost indescribable. 